this is 3D printed and I am just uh, essentially this is my granite surface plate which is super accurate they lack them and so they're very very accurate to retract the process anyway got some foil over it to protect it from the grit of the sandpaper that I have taped to it and then this will just make this super super flat and what this is is I have these guys they go to there, oh they fit, I haven't even checked. And these go on here, and you can see they fit like perfectly because I measured them. <laughs> and then this goes on the bed of my CNC machine, and uh, right in the center of this, right here, I'm gonna lathe up a piece um, of aluminum, and then it'll have a wire coming down below and running through this, and then it's gonna be my probe. It's gonna come in to probe off of this, and I'm just gonna mount this to the back of the machine, and I'll have this at a fixed point that I know where it's at, and I'll use that as my G28, and that's how I'll uh, that's how I'll probe the thing, and it's just gonna make my life a lot easier to do all these parts. I almost forgot to film here. Um, I'm coming through with a razor blade and just running a chamfer on this, and then I'll finish it up on the stone over there. And I also ran a file to the inside of the holes to clean them up as well. And then last but not least, I'm just finishing up um, this spot here where the lathe piece is going to sit. It's probably not planar, but I'm going to clamp it down and I'm going to mill the top anyway. And I can probe it in place and then I'll take it back off and I'll finish that milled part. But then I'll know it's completely flat to the machine. All right guys, so I have um, this guy here, which you saw me make. Um, well, you saw me finish. And then I have this guy right here. And this is a um, piece I did on the lathe. Um, I have a lathe. If you do not have a lathe, don't click off this video because you just have to change the design of this to not be round, make it square, or you can make it round and just use a piece of stock and then just stick it in there and make it you know, less pretty and awesome. Um, and as long as, because what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put this on here and I'm gonna bolt it in here and I'm actually gonna mill this flat to the machine anyway. So this top, I did make it pretty just because I was practicing, um, but you know, I have a nice thing that'll make it nice to where it'll sit in here and be really pretty. You don't have to do that. You can do that without doing this, but I have a lathe, so I did that. Now I'm gonna use is acetone and paper towel, and I'm going to clean up both sides here. Often I would go and I'd scruff this up with a little bit of sandpaper just to give it a little more tooth, but with all the contact area here, I am not too worried about it. Also, it looks too pretty for me to go mess up with sandpaper. I don't want to do that. I don't need too much on the plastic, just want to give it a little bit. Make sure there's nothing in there. Great. Now, I'm not going to do too much, though this nozzle is broken. I didn't even get any out. There we go. Get it all over every surface, don't need a ton. And then I'm just gonna smash it into place. I did check that it fit earlier. I was gonna do a check for it before I put it on there, but I did check on the lathe, so there we go. And I'm actually not gonna spray this one with the accelerant because I'm not gonna finish it today. Um, and also this accelerant, uh, which causes super glue to set instantly, it uh, changes the color of this, which I don't like. And I want this one to look good, I'm just, you know. Parts can work and look ugly, but why not make them look good? I gotta say, that is a good looking start. So we'll get it on the machine and... Uh I'm back over here on the stone guys and I have these guys pressed in, which uh, 
funny enough, I guessed the size of this and I found a washer that fit perfectly, which I think is just awesome that I guessed that perfect. Looks really nice. Then I had them tightened down with the, uh, the hardware to put it on just to get these on with the super glue. So I took the, I kind of lapped those a little bit to give them a little bit of surface roughness and get them a little flatter. And then I, uh, I bolted them down. I put them on pretty tight. Uh, without a torque wrench or anything like that. Um, and then interestingly, you can see here that I've been, I've been lapping um, because I wanted to, at first I thought maybe it was overkill, but you can see here, because remember the lap is perfectly flat, and then when I, as soon as I tighten this, there's all kinds of interesting things going on. So for starters, you can see here um, is the perfect example is it pressed in and left a divot there, um, which that's kind of be expected if you take something that's kind of sharp like this and you press it in. I, I used the backside because it was flatter, but um, I expected that. What I didn't really expect as much is if you like look over here, there's like this, uh, you can see where it was kind of sanded here, but then around this, um, not not just the marks, but there's like an entire kind of low section here. So it actually kind of crushed in this entire area. So I'm going to lap it back in and get it flat again. And then when I put this on the machine, I'm going to set the torque value on it pretty darn low, probably like around like maybe 10 pounds, maybe less than that, but probably 10. I don't want it to come loose, maybe seven. All right, guys, as you can see here, I have the probe and the tool. And I didn't show you how I probed this in. So let me go ahead and show you a mock-up because I've already done it, how I did it. So I've placed on there the, a one, two, three block. So this is my current probe. This is one that came with the tool, right? With the CNC. And it's just got a wire. And then it's sitting on top of a one, two, three. The reason it's sitting on top of a one, two, three is because that's a very known height. And the surface of the new probe is too small for the old probe to sit on top of it. So then I just added the length of this to this. And then I have that as my probe distance. And then I'd have the tool pulled up and I probed on top of it. So now I'm gonna... So I zeroed this directly on top, and right now it's pretty easy to tell that this is not touching. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to bring it to zero, I'm going to drop it down about three thou, and then I'm going to run the same path again. And then I'm going to switch it to incremental inch, and I'm going to bring it down three thou. So one, two, three. Great. So now it's re-zeroed. Now we're going to run it again. Okay guys, so now I can see in there that there's just a very little hair at the back. You can't tell, but you'll just have to take my word for it. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop it down another couple thou, and I'll do it one more time. As you should be able to tell here, there should be lines now, and before there was a swirl. So now you can tell that I've cut this down. And uh, I was gonna clean this up. You can, I can also tell from the chamfer I put on this that there's not over here. So you can tell how it, it cut unevenly, which is fine, and kind of to be expected. Okay, I just licked it with a file just to take down that edge, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in and we're gonna do the lapping to make this perfectly flat. Not 100% necessary, definitely not 100% necessary. This would definitely work how it is right here. I'm just a perfectionist and I have this stone, so why not use it? Now the key to lapping something like this that's uh, small like this is not let it rock, because then you'll lose your edge. So I'm trying to grab it towards the bottom and not press very hard as I do this lapping here.
You can see I just did the probe. I just initiated the probe. It went down, it touched, came up a little bit and went back down and touched again. Now I'm going to move it over here and I'm going to bring it to the zero and you'll be able to see it's exactly in line with this. So here you can see guys, I have this probe is pretty much exactly at the same height as the tool. So that's awesome. That is exactly what we want. I just have this, the probe length set to zero. Now you may be wondering, this is probably a, a, something that's on a lot of your guys' mind, is how does this actually work? Well, you'll see this wire coming here and this will be tucked over. So let's go ahead and do that. Just like that. Maybe I'll 3D print a clamp, a little thing to hold this down. Um, but that comes around here and that's going into this junction. That's a whole mess of stuff down here. So I'm not even gonna get into that. But the pertinent information is you need to know this right here is grounded. So that plastic right there grounds it so that it doesn't touch this metal. And then over here on my fixture plate, screwed in over here, there's another wire. So this wire right here is the hot end. At least, I don't know if it's actually the hot end or not, but we'll just say it is for this demonstration. So you have negative here and that negative grounds actually through the entire machine. Now, I would never have done this except for the fact that while I was experimenting with it, I thought this would be insulated. I really did, because this has a thick um, anodization on it. So I actually thought that this was gonna be insulated from the rest of the machine. Turns out through trial and error and actually through trying to build the thing another way, I realized that this, when that wire, this red wire is grounded to this plate over here, this entire thing becomes attached to that wire essentially. So then if I insulate the other end of the gate and close it, I can essentially make a probe that directly measures the tool. So there's the tool in there. That's a uh, um, carbide end mill with a Z plus coating on it from Helical. Um, great tool. My favorite tool actually, that one right there. Um, and then when it comes in, remember the entire machine, including the um, carbide, which is a metal, so it conducts, is negative. And then it comes over here and it touches this end, which is positive. And then because it's on plastic, uh, it's insulated from the rest of the system. So that allows me to do my um, Z probing, my probing of the height and length of each tool. And then my other tool, I had essentially one I just held down on something. I have that one still and I can still use it if I want to. So here's the other one. Here's the original one right here. So works the exact same way, except I wanted one fixed on the machine. And then the other thing I have is this guy right here, which I have another video on. Um, this is my XY probe and this goes into the thing, into the collet, and then it can come over and probe an outside corner like that. So between these probes now, I have pretty awesome probes. So this right here essentially is like my, oh, now I can't remember the name of the probes they use. It's not a Mori, a Heimer. This is essentially my poor man's Heimer. Um, I have this guy machined in really, really tight. I did it on my lathe. Um, and then this guy was lapped down, but I really didn't like having to take it on and off. And if you look at a lot of the like um, CNCs on the Haas machines, they have their probe on the machine. They actually come in and touch the uh, machine. They actually have the machine on, which I have not done that. I don't think that's necessary to do that here. But uh, I just do it with the tool off. But they have them just mounted onto the machine. So the next thing I'm going to do, the last piece I have to do to finish this, which I'm going to do off camera. You're not going to see me do it. But I'm going to take this. I'm going to use either my other probe or a piece of paper underneath the tool. And I'm going to figure out the height difference between like this and the work surface up here, which is where I work. I work in this area for the most part, so I'll have it zeroed here. And then another thing is gonna be zeroed on top of these offsets, which is these things I just have on the machine right now, just because um, I'll also have a zero for that, and I'll just know the distance. I'll figure it out by trial and error and through measurement. Um, I'm not gonna like try to measure this and then measure that and then subtract them. I'm just gonna literally use the machine to measure it. And then um, I'll have the zero for the bed and a zero for the top of these offsets as well. And then that will allow me to pick that up really, really efficiently. And that just, that dude right there is just going to stay there. So guys, thanks for watching. I really hope you like this. Um, this thing right here, I'm going to use this and these offsets you see right here to machine an Iron Man suit. And I literally bought the aluminum. Well, the aluminum literally ships today. So I have $700 worth of aluminum that's going to fit on these offsets here. And I'm going to machine an Iron Man suit. Um, that right there is a, uh, a test piece in front of the laptop. That right there is a test piece uh, of the torso. So that goes on my torso right there. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, I love you. Um, if you're new to the channel, you just found this because you're looking to make a CNC probe and you want to subscribe to my channel, it'd really help me out. If you're not new and you are subscribed, or if you're not and you'd like to like this video, that would also help me out. You guys are great, I love you, bye. And it wouldn't be complete without a 3D printed cover, guys.